Hey, Sean here, and in this video, I'm gonna go over six steps to start email marketing. Now, email marketing is by far the best way to market yourself online. In fact, did you know this? 99% or somewhere thereabout of internet users check their email at least once a day. So imagine that, you can send something out that most likely they're gonna see that day or the next day. You know, and as a result, you know, marketers have noticed this, and this is what they say. They say about 60% of marketers say that their best marketing campaigns are email marketing. So that gives them the highest ROI, or return on investment, is from email marketing. 60% of marketers say that. So, as you can see, email is by far one of the best ways that you can get yourself out there get more leads, sales, and customers. So that's why I'm putting together this video to give you these six steps to start email marketing that you can apply right after watching this video. All right, let's dive into those six steps to start email marketing, starting with step Number one, which is to get or grow an email list. Now, getting an email list and growing it is by far probably one of the most important steps on this list because without it, you can't really do much. So let's dive into a couple ways if you haven't already acquired a list, let's dive into some easy, simple things that you can do to get a list. So first off, what you should do is go out and collect up all of your current and past clients emails and put them on one list then add to it your friends and family and put them on that list now i know some of you might feel like you might get a little worried about sending to all these people and that's okay but you need to understand that if people don't want your email they can just unsubscribe don't worry about if it's going to harm them in some way or the fact that they may unsubscribe from it, just put them on that list. It's better to send out an email to people than to not do it. It just ends up that people who aren't interested will just unsubscribe. And you're gonna have to understand that there is a percentage of people that are going to do that. Don't take it personal, it's just part of email marketing. Now that you've got that, you can add, here's another cool tip to add, there's a bit more emails to that list. Go to your own email and copy over all of your email contacts. And those are people that have sent you an email or you've sent them an email and put them onto your list. Again, don't worry uh, if some of these people end up unsubscribing or you think they might. Just put them on the list and then go from there. So there you have it. You should now have at least an email list to start with and then you want to do and set up which is probably one of the most important steps to this which is to set up some way of continuing to grow that email list now this is important because you have this email list and if you don't continue to grow it it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because people are going to tend to unsubscribe eventually you're just going to naturally get a percentage of people that do that uh, again, don't take it personal. It's just part of email marketing. So that's why you always want to continue to grow and expand your list. To do that, you can do a couple of things. You can run an ad uh, campaign where you can give away something for free, maybe just some informational uh, packet or a PDF or something like that in exchange for people giving you their email list and then you can put them on your list. You can do the exact same thing on your website. Now, you might think, hey, but if I'm gonna advertise to people, I'm gonna advertise my service or product. Here's the thing, it's way more valuable to actually give something for free to someone and get their email address so that you can continue to market them over and over again than only to sort of cherry pick the people who are ready to purchase and buy your service right then and there. Instead, you can get a list of people who both include those people who want to start um, buying your service now and those who may want to buy later on. So I would suggest running your campaigns both on your site and off your site to try to collect and gather more emails and continue to grow that email list. 
All right, now that you have an email list and you have a way set up to continue to grow it, you're ready to move on to step number two, which is to get the email sending service, some sort of mass email sending solution that will allow you to take all of your emails and send them out. Now, there are tons of companies and ways out there and methods to do this. And I'm gonna tell you two things that you should look for no matter what one you choose. And that is one, you wanna make sure that they're not too strict on how you acquired those emails and how they opted in. Some companies and some solutions are very strict with that. And even if you legitimately got those email addresses and they opted in, they still might not allow you to send to them. So therefore you wanna ask upfront how they basically, uh, what are the requirements for you to send to an email address? Does it have to opt in some special way? Does it have to double opt in, which means that they had opt in once and then you had to send them an email and they had to click that or reply back that yes, they wanna opt in. Um, which can really dwindle down your email list because the small percentage of people will actually follow through with that. Now, so you wanna check that out, find that out, and go with the company that doesn't restrict you as much on that. The other thing you wanna check out is how many emails you can actually send. Now, some companies kind of trick you almost in a way with this. They tell you, well, you can have so many contacts. Well, contacts doesn't really necessarily answer that question because they could say you can have a thousand contacts, but you can only send a thousand emails a month, which means you can really only send one email out a month. So you wanna find out how many emails can I send per month? And that is a key stat you need to look at before deciding on these. Now, with so many of them out there, we've gone through ourselves and investigated and checked out and used tons of these companies and platforms. And as a result, we've decided to create our own so that we could best um, you know, utilize our email marketing and not have to worry about some of those points. So if you're interested in that, you can feel free to um, reach out to us. There's a link in the description of this video for a free evaluation. Click on that, fill out your info, and you can get in touch with us that way and we can talk to you about getting you set up with that. All right, so now that you have an email sending solution, you're ready to move on to step number three, which is to create a schedule to sending those emails out. Now this is super important because you wanna be consistent. You wanna make sure that your emails are going out on a consistent basis. People notice this when you stop to tend to you know, not continue on that same schedule. They do notice and they lose interest when you don't continue sending on the same schedule that you're used to. Um, so in a couple points that I should talk about with this, because you're probably wondering how often I should send and when should I send, and I suggest sending several times a week. Now, that may seem like that's a lot, but really, again, you need the reason why a lot of people worry about that is because they're worried about unsubscribes or whether people will be offended you're emailing them a lot, but you have to think about this. Think about how many emails you get, how many phone calls you get, how many text messages you get, and uh, how many pieces of mail you get, you know, snail mail, and how many times people, you know, talk to you or knock at your door or come to your office. You're getting interrupted every day a lot with a lot of different messages coming at you. Sending a couple emails a week is not, it's just, you're just barely getting on that person's radar. If you're only sending one or two a month, you are probably not even really even on their radar because they're inundated every day, all of us are, with lots of content and information and messages that come to us. So sending at least a couple a week is probably the ideal thing. I mean, even up to doing one a day, two a day. That is okay, and again, the thing you do need to stress though with this is that the email should be of value. You wanna make sure that they're of value because people are not going to be offended or going to not want the emails if they are of high value. So I would suggest making sure investing in those emails, making sure that you have some kind of schedule but some kind of content that you know that people you're sending to are gonna find valuable. 
All right, there you go. Once you've got that, you're probably your next question is gonna be, what time of the day should I send? And the answer to that is you wanna send so that your emails arrive in their inbox around 10 or 11 a.m. And the reason for that is a recent study was done that showed that most people tend to click and open their email at that time. So you don't wanna send your email at that time, you wanna send it before then so that it actually arrives in their email box just before then. And the reason is because then on their email list, you're gonna be at the top in their email box, in their inbox, so the first email they're gonna open is gonna be yours and read it. So there you go, that's a quick little trick. Now, the only exception to that time, 11, uh, 10 to 11, is on Sundays, for some reason, that time seems to be about, the ideal time is 9 p.m. So other than that, those are the times that you should be sending, or try to at least send to get your email into that person's inbox. All right, so now that you have a schedule and you know when to send these emails, it's time to move on to step number four, which is designing an email template. Now, you, this step is a little bit um, challenging because some you know, audiences that you email to, the ideal thing for them is actually a text-based email. Sometimes it is a designed email where it has pictures and images. You really need to find out what works best for your audience and the type of content that you're sending them. So you may need to send a couple emails out. You may even wanna ask people on your email list what they prefer, or you may even just wanna see the statistics of what do people actually click and open and what do they do? Do they actually click on the links inside my email if it's text-based or do they tend to click on it and interact more with it if it's images and actual design? Now, so let's go on the end of you're actually making a design. So with that, a few pointers. You wanna make sure that the, at the top of your email, um, your header, or if you have a picture at the top of that email, it doesn't cover up the whole email so that they have to scroll down to actually start reading your content. Because here's the thing, when people don't see your content right off the bat, a percentage of them are just gonna delete or just skip on to the next email. So you wanna make sure that you put your most important things at the very top where people can actually see it. So make a smaller header or a smaller image at top. Not that you wanna not have a header or image, but just make sure that your content, the most important thing, maybe your first couple sentences, your whatever sort of headline you're gonna have is up there and people can see it on all different types of devices, cell phones, um, you know, and different email platforms. So once you've got that, the next thing is making sure that the meat of your content of your email is not too long. Now, I saw a study where they said the best performing emails were something around 50 to 150 words. So that's not a lot of text. So you don't want to go too crazy on writing really long emails, and it kind of makes sense. People don't want to probably read a whole bunch. They've got a lot of other emails probably to go through, so don't make their job harder, or they're probably just going to skip on to another one. Um, so once you've got that, the last thing you want to do is make sure that that email does include, whether it's a text email or a designed email, that you're including your company name or your name and an address and contact information and also a way to unsubscribe. Those points are critical because they're actually required by law that you include that on your email campaigns. So make sure you put that there and I suggest just putting in the very footer of the email. Try not to maybe draw too much attention to it because it's really not the point of your email. The other things are. All right, so now that you've got your email designed, you're ready to move on to step number five, which is to check your email's sending score. Now, this is big and a lot of people don't know this, but your email address actually has a sending score. And if you have a bad score, it doesn't matter how good your emails are, they're not gonna end up in the inbox and they're gonna go to the dreaded spam box. So you wanna check this and without getting into the technical details of what makes that score high or low, um, one thing you can do is just go to Google and search for check my email sending score or search for email sending tools and then just go through one of those sites and sort of check over 
um, your email. Now, there are probably some other points that maybe some of those tools, not every one of those tools is gonna go through every one of the points and things that you need to look over. So if you're really um, serious about making sure that you have the, the best email sending score you can, um, in the link, in a, I mean, excuse me, in the description of this video will be a link for a free evaluation so that we can help you with that. We'll check over your email sending score, we'll look through it, give you a report, and talk to you about what you can do to improve it if there's some issues, and uh, go from there. All right, so after you've checked your email sending score, corrected any issues that you found, you're ready to move on to the final step, which is step number six, which is to actually send your emails out. Now, before you do that, the probably most critical thing you do is actually send yourself that email. Uh, that way you can check it over, make sure you actually get it in your inbox um, and check over the email, click every link that's in the email, check that all the images work, check over the spelling one last time before you send it out. Once you've checked it, everything looks good, then go ahead, send your email out. Now, it doesn't stop there. I should also note that after you've sent your email out, you do wanna check over your stats of your email. How many people opened it? Uh, how many people unsubscribed? Now again, don't worry so much about the fact that people have unsubscribed if they do. People are naturally going to do that. But instead, look at these things and think with how you can better your email next time you send so uh, that your email does end up getting more opens and more clicks and you end up with an even higher valued email and as a result, your ROI on these emails and your campaigns uh, does better. All right, so there you have it. That was the six steps that you can use to start email marketing. Now, if you're not sure what to do still, or you need a little help with any of these points, or you want some additional help on this, and you're ready for an even advanced steps on this, uh, go ahead and click in the description of this video. We're gonna give you a free evaluation. Just click on the link you'll see in there for that, and then fill out your information, and we'll talk with you about getting uh, uh, a better uh, perspective of all of these points for you and whatever areas you need to address. So there you have it. Good luck with your email marketing campaign.